You shall not pass. Isn't that what the firewall should do? Isn't that what you want your firewall to do? I mean, admit it. That's what the firewall should do. Am I right? The other side of that firewall, don't forget, the other side of the firewall is fly, you fools. Maybe some of you get the reference. I, I don't know. But that, that's what you want your firewall to be able to do. And that's what we're going to talk about in this little session about did the firewall do what it's supposed to do. So you shall not pass blocks what needs to be blocked. Fly, you fools, says Get what you need through fast as you can get it through. And that's what the distributed firewall is set up to do and actually gets done. So in this session, we're going to talk about the NSXT data center distributed firewall and how it configures, how it works, how it's done. We're going to talk about the tools that are built in so we can check to make sure it's working. I've got a couple little demos that are recorded that we can uh, view. We're going to use the CLI to validate. Uh, if you saw Mark Allenbaugh earlier, he had a, a session to kind of talk about uh, summarized DV filter. If you didn't see it, you're lucky because I'll show it to you here. Uh, we'll look at v VSIP by Octo. We'll look at some ways so we can validate with the, v, uh, with the CLI. I'm going to have enough time to wave at vRealize Log Insight. So everybody get ready to wave at vRealize Log Insight. I'm going to say a wave to vRealize Network Insight. Great tools but I'm, I'm just not going to have enough time to really be able to go th into those in any detail. So that's our uh, agenda for today. And our clicker says we're going to start with the data center virtualization firewall. You shall not pass is the job of the firewall to, let's say, this virtual machine. I set up a little lab, and I've got a switch called Moria and a switch called the Shire. Yeah, I know. I've got a, a handful of virtual machines, Bagend, Frodo, and Sackville in the Shire, and Balrog, Kazad, and Deep Dark in Moria. Now, the Balrog is not supposed to be able to, you shall not pass, is not, not supposed to be able to go into, the, into Kazad Doom, not be able to pass that bridge, not be able to go. That virtual machine can't go past there. So how does that happen? Like this. There's a green dot that turns red. You shall not pass. Look where it happens. This is what got me so excited about what the distributed firewall and NSX brought to the table. I'm not filtering this after it goes onto the network. I'm filtering this before it even hits its first switch. The same thing is going to apply, although my clicker might not work, between Sackville and Bagend. Sackville baggage is our block from going to bag end. So a green dot turns red. Stopped. Firewall blocked it. You shall not pass. But on the other hand, the stuff that we want to go through, for example, we want to send the Balrog to the deep dark places. That's where we want him to go. We want him to go there fast. So the distributed firewall says, you know what? I'm going to allow that to take place. Wow, that was quick. That's what it's supposed to do. That's what the firewall is supposed to do. If stuff's allowed to go through, let's get it there. That's what distributed firewall does. You know, Sackville wants to talk to Frodo. Outstanding. Whoosh. The sound effect's pretty good, right? Whoosh. It's quick. It's quick. It goes through. It goes through right away. I'm, and now I'm doing it in memory on the host. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, firewall as fast as we can. And we've got some capabilities of getting that done. So how do we do this is we build a set of rules. What a shock. We're building firewall rules. Okay, So we build these firewall rules and we set them up. Now what I did is try to make a simple set of rules. And I said, Sackville group can not talk to each other. Reject over there on the far right. The Balrog group, I got a reject set up for the Balrog group. How did I populate those groups? I'm going to show you. Populate those groups through the use of tags. And we're going to allow those tags to take place. Sackville, Balrog, Moria, the Shire, those can be filled with tags. And, and, and so I've got the population of each of these set up with 
virtual machines in each of the groups are defined by the specific uh, tags that are put into place. Now, one of the things that I get asked in classes a lot is, how do I set up those tags? Well, it's really not very hard. I record a little demo here to say, go into inventory, get to your virtual machines, choose the one you want to tag, identify the edit, go ahead to the field, put in the new tag that you want to put there. Do not forget to hit that green check mark or it will not take. You hit that green check mark, come over here and get save, and ta-da, you have a tag. And that tag could then be used to populate the groups. Just to check to make sure the tag is there, you go over to the little icon. This is, this, is, this is the policy manager. This is a simplified UI. Awesome, right? Somebody nod at least. It's awesome. It is. It's very cool. It's very cool. All right. Some of the other tools in that simplified UI. We've got trace flow, port connection, port mirroring, and IP fixer. We're going to look through a couple of those as we go in. Trace flow is one of my favorite tools that get built into the uh, advanced networking and security at this point solution. We go to advanced networking and security, we choose trace flow down here in a part, we decide on which virtual machines we want to trace. So we define the source, and then we'll go over and define the destination, and then we'll run a trace. Now I happen to be using Balrog and Kazad. What do you think is going to happen? You'd be exactly right. Man! It's blocked before it hits the switch. Now, how did it get blocked? Well, we look at the rule, and it actually identifies the rule, and the identification is 3072. In that same advanced network and security, I uh, identified a firewall, there's 3072. Fantastic. The rule worked just the way it was defined. Yes! The firewall did what? It stopped the traffic. You shall not pass. OK, how about one that? It's going to go through. I'm going to choose again a virtual machine, the Balrog to the deep dark places. We're sending them off. We're going to send them off to the deep dark places and run another trace. That other trace gets run, and here we see all the steps that took place from one VM to the other. The logical switch it hits, the distributed router that it hits. We go through each of the steps until it gets there. But each entry in the distributed firewall Egress and ingress is identified by the rule. It's identified by the rule, 2057 in this example, that is used to pass that traffic along. OK. So 2057, there it is. That's how it was allowed. Sweet. Perfect. Just the way we wanted it, just the way we wrote it, absolutely the way we wanted it to work. So. How about the chance that we have when a firewall blocks something? Are we sure it's the firewall? Are we sure it's a firewall? Our port connection tool, which also exists in advanced networking and security at this point in time, will allow us to check the ports to make sure the connections are all good so we can validate that, in fact, it must be the firewall that blocked it because connections are all up. So we identify, again, a source and a destination. And we look then at the, there's Balrog. There's Kazadoom. So we know, does that work? Can they go through? Is that supposed to go through? No, we saw the firewall block that a little while ago. But I'm going to check to make sure by hitting go that the connections are all up. That's what the con port connection tool is for. So now I can see things like, Here's my host VTEP or TEP IDs, the tunneling endpoint, that go between one host and another. Okay, so I can check each one of those hosts, but I could also drill down into the virtual machines. Are the virtual machines VNIX up? Are they ready? Are they ready to rock and roll? Well, Balrog is, Kazadoom is, so their connections are good, so that didn't stop the flow. How about the logical switch ports? Up and up, we're connected. The port connection tool will identify that. How about the physical NICs? Looks like that one's up. Looks like the MTU size is right. I should have asked the question early on. Harrison's back there making notes. Does anybody know NSX? 
Anybody use Genesect? Anybody in here? Show of hands. Okay. He's typing. He's not going to put his hand up. Okay. All right. So you do know what NSX is doing, right? NSX is encapsulating on the logical switch. We're talking about the firewall. We're not talking about all the inner workings of NSX in this session. But the MTU size is checked through the port connection tool, as well as the firewall rules. And then we set the tunnel. The TEP is the tunnel between. And we can see in both directions the tunnel's up. So what stopped that traffic from the Balrog to Casa Du? The firewall. The firewall. Okay. So that's how that guy worked. That's a good thing. Has anybody ever done a packet capture or a, or, or a port mirroring solution? Anybody ever done that? What tool do you use typically to do that capture? Of course you use Wireshark. Who wouldn't use Wireshark? Well, me. I don't have it in the virtual machine I've got. So I'm going to show you with TCP dump how a port mirroring session can be set up. I'm going to take a logical span and identify a receiver and then identify a source and grab the traffic as it goes between those guys and take a little look, if I can get it started, take a little look at what happens when that traffic gets initiated. Doing a quick ping and seeing it, this is the Balrog, this is Kaza Doom who's actually accepting that traffic. Wait, 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 the firewall was blocking that. No, the firewall's not blocking port mirroring traffic. Ah, control plane traffic, control traffic I can still receive. And that's what we're seeing in that demo right there. So we can see the traffic actually taking place. Port mirroring's a valuable tool. IP fix. Anybody doing IP fix collecting? Oh, less hands. Yeah. Okay, a little bit. IP fix can be set up in two ways in NSXT. I can set it up with a distributed firewalls flow table. Now, if you've studied NSX at all, if you went through our ICM, you've probably heard about the fact that the NSX uh, IO chain creates vSIP that has a rule table. And once a rule gets processed positively, it populates a flow table. So subsequent packets are checked against that flow table and fly, you fools. It goes through much faster by checking a flow table, not having to process a rule set every single time. Well, that flow table can also be used by IPFIX to populate our IPFIX output. So I can build a collector for the firewall collector, identify, and I'd probably set up vRealize Network Insight as my flow collector because, well, you know, because here I am. Wearing VMware shirt, of course, I'm going to identify vRealize Network Insight as our flow collector at this point. Uh, I can do a uh, identify the the um, machines that I'm collecting their flows and gather that flow information for further analysis. There, the other option we have with IPFIX is collected per switch. We set up an IP IPFIX per switch. Identify the switch that we're going to work with and then gather, oh yeah, you kind of got to hit the save, and then go on beyond and say yes there. Just say yes. Just say yes. It's a line I use a lot. Just say yes. My wife doesn't always agree with my thought process there, and she's watching live, so I probably shouldn't do that. But the uh, applied to is then picked, and we identify the switch in question. Okay. We apply to the fix, and we choose the logical switch that we have in place. Or, to use the proper terminology today, that would be a, it's a quiz. I forgot to bring my candy up here I was going to hand out. It's called a segment. In the current version of NSXT, we're referring to that layer two object as a segment. And then we choose that segment, and we're identifying whether or not that guy will run. OK, enough of this gooey stuff. Let's talk about the CLI. And let's look at some of the tools we have in the CLI to identify whether or not this guy is working. Is the DFW actually doing its job? That is what the whole presentation's about, right? Is the DFW doing its job? 
So the first thing we're going to do is identify in the category rules, what is the rule that I'm really looking at here? Choose that rule, okay? That's the Balrog, Balrog rule. You know, we identified that earlier. Balrog, Kazadum, we're, re we're rejecting that stuff. Now I changed it to drop just to show the impressible uh, uh, version. And then we can go in and identify the host. We do the actual CLI on the host. Where does the distributed firewall live? Who can tell me where the distributed firewall lives? The ESXi host in the kernel of the ESXi host. With the kernel module, it's been deployed when you prepared NSX for, uh, uh, for ESX. So I went in here and said, and I'm not sure, these are really small letters. That says summarize hyphen DV filter, and then I grepped Balrog TAC A5. I only want to see this. That's the only line I want. That's the filter. Then I'll use vsip by octal, get fw config dash f, and show you the filter. Paste that filter in. Oh, man, that's a lot of information. I got a little itty bitty lab. I got a tiny little lab. So I want to probably limit that. And so I did a grip with the. Um, FC, I chose this, and I chose that because it was the address set and the rule set that was in question. There's the rule, and here's the address set. So my rule says I'm going to drop traffic that goes between 11 and 22 in that subnet. Again, that's the thing that got me. I can control traffic in the same subnet. And I'm not going out to some device to get that traffic control. I'm controlling it right in that subnet. Now, I want to prove it. So I'm going to do a packet capture. And the packet capture is going to be set up. And uh, you'll get copies of this. You'll see. But it's PACCAP UW capture pre-DV filter. Choose that filter and put an output file. Then I'm going to do post-DV filter the whole time this ping is running. The whole time this ping is operating, okay? Well, that's great. I've got, took a long time to get any captured on here post DV filter because there wasn't any traffic after the firewall. So now I can look through and use TCP dump UW to show the pre and the post. The pre shows all the different frames. The post showed nada. Firewall's working right in that host and not letting everything go through. That's like, wow. Come on, just say it. That's like, wow. <laughs> Thank you. The other thing that we, we added here in NSXT in the, in the advanced or the uh, simplified UI is the ability to define the policies. And each policy, something we couldn't do in previous version, was enabling logging for all the rules within that policy. Used to could, you had to go in and click log, log. You had to turn on, on every rule. Now you can go the whole policy. So as you define your policies, just hit the, uh, hit the enable logging for all the rules. Okay. So, we set it up, we identify the rule is on. We could go in here and enable logging for that particular rule if we wanted to. Does anybody, does anybody here know where that log is created? Come on, you didn't know this was interactive, did you? VMK logs, almost. DFWPKTLOGS.log. You don't remember that? It just rolls right off your tongue, doesn't it? On each individual host. On each individual host, it's set up so that you can, wow, look at each host. Well, that's where they live. So you can identify that in each one of the hosts. You see I've got uh, uh, traffic that has been used and run through. And I've got no packets received, no packet loss. All right, I got some that worked, and some that didn't. How do you think the log's going to look? Hopefully, I got some that worked and some that didn't, right? 
So let's take a look. One of the things that, that when I did this, I went, wow, eye-opening. Each drop is identified. Each one of the pings that's dropped, I identified. I established an SSH session and started working, and I had one pass. Okay, now I gave you a hint a little earlier about why I've only got one pass. Flow table, very good. So my rule doesn't have to get hit on an acceptable rule each time. One pass, it goes through by checking the flow table going forward. Say, fly, you fools. I heard somebody, fly, you fools. That's how we get that performance coming out of the distributed firewall. So really, after all this, is the DFW doing its job? That's kind of the big question. And we can answer it. We've seen it. We can see the tool. We can see it's working just fine. Now, I don't have you know, a lot of time left. I appreciate the time that you've spent with me. My name's Tim Burkhard, and um, uh, I have a Twitter account. And it's V underscore Gandalf. I don't know where I came up with that. Somebody else named me. I just chose it. <laughs> a couple of tools. One of the tools I really, where did that take place? Oh, it's not. No, it isn't. And identify. And there's a, uh, well, traffic, alerts, overview. It's all right in nicely. And it, it gives insight. How are you going to, okay. I, who's, who's a networking guy? in here. Who's the network guy? Usually I imagine I got security guys. A networking guy. Okay, one of the yeah, yeah, yeah. security guys. How many security guys are in here? Eh, how many guys are just here because it's a show and it's late and you thought you'd sit down? Uh, that's a bigger number. Okay, that's perfect. All right, so the realized network insight. The question that I ask of my customers when I go out into the field is, do you know what traffic is running on your network? Do you know what traffic is running on your network? What do you think I hear? Nope. nope. Do you know? I saw network hands. You know all the traffic running on your network? Do you know what should be there and what shouldn't be there? Do you have any idea what kind of traffic you're actually running? Nope. This tool will use analytics, will use the flow collections that can be set up and fold, spindle, mutilate, and define for you the traffic that is running on your network, giving you a full set of operations and troubleshooting, a full set of open problems, a full set of what's actually happening within your network. Even better, it gives you a visual. Remember that traceful tool? Man, that was nice. It is nice, but it's only for your virtual workloads. V Realize Network Insight can see your physical workloads and can see the underlay network that's going on too. So you can follow that traffic not only through the virtual space, but out through the physical world as well. Okay, that is a plus to define. But what's really another thing that's kind of cool is see these two guys over here? I know it's kind of small, but those are two firewalls. One is a distributed firewall and the other is a partner firewall. So we can examine the traffic as it goes through partner firewalls on east-west or north-south traffic as well. Okay, That's what Network Insight brings. Gives you a graphical look and gives you a flow look to see what kind of traffic's actually running from where to where. Where do you want the traffic to go? Okay, You can look at this and go, they're not supposed to be talking to them. And take that and write a rule. Take that right out there, export it right into an XML and write a rule. Boom, done. You're gonna make groups. It'll suggest groups, I should say. It'll suggest groups. It'll suggest rules to allow. The goal of our distributed firewall is the goal that everybody has. You heard Pat talking this morning about security and going to fix security. The distributed firewall is a major part of fixing security and to get to a whitelist environment where only what we want to go goes. 
Fly, you fools. Okay? You shall not pass is an ultimate default rule. Don't let anybody go that's not supposed to. Only allow, right? Is that, is that is the security guys we've got? Is that what we want to get to? We call it whitelisting, and that's our goal to get to it. And Be Realized Network Insight can aid you in getting to that point.